John Cage is best known as a composer. He also was a visual artist, and those two practices dovetailed with each other from time to time, especially in the medium of printmaking. In the late 1960s, he worked with a lithographer named Erwin Hollander to create a number of artworks, including his plexigram series, his mushroom books. Erwin Hollander, in his workshop, produced these prints and other art media. In the early 1970s, Erwin Hollander moved to Bloomfield Hills to be the artist in residence for the printmaking department at Cranbrook. Basically, as soon as he got there, he facilitated an exhibition of Cage's work to tour to the museum and a visit of John Cage to Cranbrook, to its campus, to meet with his students, which would also be accompanied by a number of performances in 2014. When I was at Cranbrook as a fellow, I embarked upon this research project, which culminated in a presentation on John Cage's visit uh, the two performances that accompanied that visit, and I interviewed about 50 former students and artists in residence at Cranbrook who told me about his time there. What resonated with me in all of these interviews was how personally everyone was touched by him, how he had a really spectacular warmth. He has this real kind of joie de vivre that comes through in his artwork and in his music. At this point, Cage was heavily utilizing a method of composition for both artwork and for uh, his musical compositions called chance operations, where he would use a Chinese book of divination called the Book of Changes that would assist him in randomly selecting images, phrases. He usually within his artwork would incorporate words of some kind or fractions of words. Often his visual art was created in tandem with his practice as a musician and a composer. Variations 4 is a great example. He would have a map of the performance space and randomly drop different markers on that map to indicate where a musician, where a pre-recorded sound, where some other sound effect would be placed within the physical space. There's a real relationship there between visual aspects and then the musical compositions. Collage to me implies intention. You know, I think you're using a lot of disparate elements in a collage, but there's an authority that, that comes with collaging. Cage was very interested in relinquishing authority uh, and maybe selecting certain aspects of a composition, but not necessarily controlling every, every portion of it. What I like about the Europras is he identifies points where an aria is, but he lets the musician choose the aria. It, there isn't really a word for what he's doing. It's kind of an art form all of his own. What I really like about John Cage's music is that you don't really need to have an understanding of the canon to absorb what's happening around you. I have found my most satisfying experiences with Cage is kind of just relinquishing conscious thought about this music and having a real sensory experience. It can be sort of meditative sometimes. It's strange, um, <laughs> it's discordant sometimes, but you know, I think it really is kind of this inimitable experience that at first may be jarring, but over time becomes really beautiful and sort of speaks to you in your own way. Cage is, is so relevant today still because of how he upended so many conventional notions of what it means to create music, to compose music, the identity of a composer as this sort of absolute authority. He relinquishes a lot of agency over his own work and invites in the other elements of the audience. People have jumped up on stage and started playing the piano or thrown beer bottles or at Cranbrook, there were streakers who streaked through the performance. All of that is intentional. It's supposed to be part of what happens within one of these performances. So I think he would be thrilled if 
if people started cheering along during, <laughs> during these operas, I think that he wanted to evoke some sense, some reaction uh, in his audience in a, in a new way. On the last night of his visit, there was a performance of six of his compositions by both professional musicians and local students that was called John Cage Listens to John Cage. These students spent several hours performing his compositions for him and a large crowd of people, and he was just thrilled. What made that performance special was the fact that these were high school students performing his work. And I know it was special for Cage, but it's also just thinking about it as sort of an event that happened in history. It's kind of incredible. So I think it was a real joy for him to see how his work could be interpreted uh, in differently every time it was performed.